I forgot my quick shortcut. Why do I always forget my shortcuts? <laughs> there we go. Hey everybody, welcome to live stream number 183. Today's topic is called break rule number one. Timer is going up there. If you're watching the recording, I will not blame you for, uh, for fast forward three minutes or so, and we will get started right on top of the hour. Um, we are going to be talking about um, what is on the forum called rule number one, how you're starting up your design process. Um, and we've covered that in previous live streams, but one of you guys made a comment the other day in the YouTube comments and... Uh, and I just feel like that this would be a good way to kind of like completely take it down. Now, after this, you should understand what rule number one is and also why I sometimes break it. Three minutes left. I can see here we got Isaac. Thank you so much. We got Norris 3D. Let me just uh, update my, uh, my Facebook because we should absolutely be live there also. So both on the YouTube and the Facebook. Now, if you're looking for me on Facebook, in case you're on the YouTube. If you're already on Facebook, you already found me. Uh, search at Mr. Lars Christensen. That would be me. Uh, we got people just coming in here. Absolutely awesome. Uh, you guys, Scott is here. Darren, Dan, absolutely appreciate it. Looks like we are also through on the Facebook. So, uh, man, that is absolutely, absolutely awesome. Truly appreciate it, folks. Don't forget down in the description area of the vid video, uh, that you can find a couple of links, uh, including to one of the models that I'm going to show today. Uh, but also, I think that after tomorrow, so tomorrow there's no live stream in the US, we celebrate the 4th of July. Um, but on Thursday, I'm going to open up uh, the Toronto invite to, uh, to other social platforms, so other artist platforms. So uh, then it might fill up a little quick if you were kind of like on the fence. If you should go to Toronto the 19th uh, and hang out with me for three hours, talking Fusion 360, talking Cam, might even buy you a drink. All right, I can see just people in here. How many do we got on the... I'm just going to see here how many we got on the YouTube. 39 people. Absolutely awesome. I really appreciate it. And of course, also if you're watching the recording, um, absolutely awesome. Really, really appreciate it. You guys are the best. Um, yep, that is all good. Let's see here. We got people from Carolina. We got people from New Zealand. Um, probably a couple of people. Eduardo is here from Argentina. We're just all over the place. Michigan, Troy from Michigan. I'm gonna be in Michigan uh, next week. I'm gonna do a dinner design workshop in uh, Michigan next Thursday, I think. So yes, today's topic, rule number one. Some of you guys are already familiar with it. If you uh, have ever done the electrical box um, that I did, uh, then you are familiar with rule number one. But today we're gonna cut that one up in pieces. Make sure that all of you guys uh, at least feel comfortable if you're not familiar with it. South Africa, Marius, man, and Texas. That's awesome. All right, cool. Well, we're counting down here. Let's see if we can't start on top of the hour today. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thumbs up if you like this, thumbs down if you don't. I want your honesty and, uh, you know, fro, I'm just gonna get rid of the timer. Any, um, any comments you have, uh, put them down in the comment area. Absolutely love them. I read them prior to all of them. Let's get going. Hi, everybody. My name is Lars Christensen. This is live stream number 183. Today is July 3rd, which means no live stream tomorrow because in the US we're gonna celebrate the 4th of July, Independence Day. Today's topic is break rule number one. This is something that I have covered a few times uh, in the live streams, but I don't, I haven't, I don't think I've done the best job. You let me know in the comment area beneath, um, <laughs> if, if not. Some of you guys uh, are maybe familiar with uh, this electrical box. Um, if you ever did that uh, tutorial, then uh, you actually uh, applied rule number one right from the get-go, what uh, means that you are already you know, following this rule number one. What originated on the Fusion 360 forum, just in case you care. And it comes to how you start your modeling process. So I wanna show you today what rule number one is, but I also wanna show you how I sometimes break it. 
<coughs> because don't tell me what to do. Um, no, but I think it could be important to kind of like see what um, what rule number one does and what happens when you don't follow it. So that's what we're going to do today. So I just wanted to bring this electrical box up um, just to show you that if you have done this tutorial, that uh, then you have already applied rule number one. That maybe make somebody who's brand new to Fusion feel better. Let's get rid of that one. Um, you will also find, uh, this is the model we're going to model up today. You will find this one down in uh, the description of this video. Um, and um, we're actually not going to model up the teeth today, but I'm going to talk about that in the end. Because I knew when I decided to use a saw, I knew somebody was going to talk to me about the teeth. Uh, so we're going to come back, <laughs> back to that. Let's talk about rule number one. That's what we're here for. Let's open up a, uh, a new document. So the basis of rule number one is uh, the order of components. Um, so inside of Fusion, when you're modeling inside of Fusion, you, if, and even if you're brand new, this is gonna be, you're gonna follow this. You start out with a 2D sketch, right? You extrude that into some shape. That becomes a body, right? If you continue extruding on that part, um, you will join whatever extra features you're adding on to that block and um, that will just keep on growing being one body. Now you can, I'm going to show you that, separate them. Now you get a, into a multi-body. Then there is components. Now to me, the way I look at it is that components are when a part have more than one, more than one thing. Uh, so in a saw, for example, you have a saw blade, that is one component, and the handle is another component, two separate parts that then is combined together, okay? So you, you use components primarily because when you go to make the saw, you are going to not be making everything out of one. You're going to be making one, the blade's going to be made out of steel, and the handle's going to be made out of wood or plastic or whatever. So that's that's components. However, and, and, and rule number one falls under best practices, and, and I agree with that. It's not that I don't agree with it, but I also think that there's times where you end up with the same result by not following rule number one. That's what I'm going to try to demonstrate today. You be the, you let me know in the, in the comments area if this makes sense or doesn't make sense. So the principle of rule number one with a blank image here is that we start out before we even draw anything up deciding how many components are we going to model up and uh, you know most times you probably know that like if we're going to model up the saw we know in this case i model up the blade i model up the handle here and then i actually imported from my master some screws um, but I know that I'm going to end up with multiple components. So rule number one says before you do anything, you will go in and you will right click and say new component. And then if you know that there's going to be multiple components, you will create another component. So now we have two components. There's absolutely nothing inside of these at all. They're just component, empty components. And you can activate them on this little fish eye here, which one is active. But you're not going to see anything different on your screen right now because, well, there's nothing really, really to see. Now, now we could name these components. So slow left click on a component. And we could call this one um, saw blade, for example. And we can slow left click on this one and call it saw handle. Now, of course, this is not necessary. But of course, this is going to make it a little bit easier uh, down the road. But this means that before you start modeling anything up, you are deciding how many components. And for some of you guys, that's easy enough. But I also sometimes find that it's not so easy. Never. That's all good. Now, if I go and I activate uh, by having a little fish eye here next to saw blade one, that means that anything I draw right now will fall within that component. If I go down to saw handle two and tick that little box down there to saw handle, now anything I sketch within here um, is 
going to be in the saw handle. I think this somewhat makes sense. Now, because I can't help myself, I want to show more than just one thing. Um, I might as well answer another question I got the other day. You will see over here that I actually have some different files over here. Let me just double click on saw blade sketch number or the saw blade sketch and also saw blade sketch handle. So I'm opening up two more documents. Now this is our original document and then I just opened up saw blade sketch number two. What I want to show you is something cool. Did you know if we activate saw blade number one, right? And now I could start a sketch, so create sketch, start a plane to sketch on, that is this one. Now I could get my line tools and start drawing up my blade. But did you know that you can take sketches from other files? And this is great if you're thinking like you have need some kind of a library or something. See, if I go to this file and I edit this sketch, I can literally like window select this, do a control C on my keyboard, command C if you're on a Mac, go back over to this open sketch we have in our empty file here, control V, and that's, you can copy sketches from one design to another. Now you will notice that this one actually comes in under define, it's blue, because you kind of like get this first move here, I'm just gonna drag it down a little bit and hit okay to this. That is just because all the dimensions came in, all the relationships except the one that relationship for the origin. So I'm just gonna go in here to the constraints. I'm gonna select the coincident from this point to the origin. Boom, and now we just brought in the saw blade um, sketch. And this was the same if I had drawn it up, but I just wanna show you, you can actually copy from other uh, designs. Get that request. So here is my sketch for my, my saw blade. I'm gonna stop the sketch. Just pretend that I drew it up in there. Now if I switch over to the saw handle, tick, you'll see that it kind of becomes, um, it comes opaque. You can actually change this in the settings, but that's another story. That tells me that my saw handle is now active and the opaque just means that it's kind of, it's, it's in there in the background. Go back to saw blade and now it's, it's active again. So this is how you kind of move this. You will also see that in saw blade, we have that sketch we just created. If I go to saw handle, then we don't get anything. Now, if I do the same thing for saw handle, open up a sketch, that same plane. I go over to my saw handle sketch here. Let me go in and edit that sketch. Right click, edit sketch. I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna window it. Control C, go back into the open sketch I have for saw handle, Control V, and that one gets uh, brought in. Now, I'm not gonna move this one. I'm just gonna say okay, Everything is blue, and the reason I'm not gonna move this one is because though that I have some lines with some dimensions in here, I also have splines. And uh, if you ever watch my uh, live streams, you know that what I like to do with splines is I like to, to just right click and fix them. So in this case, I'm just gonna right window the whole thing, right click and say fix, and that's gonna fix that whole sketch. So in the first sketch, we do use the coincident relationship I kind of like made it parametric. In this case here, I just kind of like glued it right to the screen with a right click and a, a fix. Hope that makes sense. Stop the sketch. So, two different components. This is rule number one. The first one, you have a saw blade. In rule number two, we have um, a sketch with a handle. So, what we will now do is we will go into saw blade and make that active. We will go in and extrude this. So I'm, I like to hit Q on my keyboard, select this inner face here, and if you drag it up like this, you can see that we now have a, a 3D uh, shape for this. Now, I'm gonna go over here in the extrude command. I'm gonna make it symmetrical, and I also wanna make sure that I, I, own, I only know the thickness of the whole blade, so I'm gonna do that there, and the blade is one millimeter, and, uh, and hit OK. And I now, in the saw blade, have a sketch and an extrusion. I'm gonna go back over to our saw, our other the handle, make that active. I am going to do the same thing, hit Q for press pull. I'm gonna select uh, this in here, so I get that uh, whole selection of the handle, and I can kind of do uh, the same thing, 
that I can go here symmetrical whole and I know that one's going to be 25 because I measured that now if you go in here uh, you will create this as a new body because this is a separate component hit OK uh, to that and we now have a saw handle um, now of course to make them both active we're going to move all the way up to the top and tick the, the top one here and we now are looking at uh, the whole both parts kind of like put together one of the things that is cool about working in uh, in this kind of workflow is that even though that we broke this up as two separate components from the from the get-go you can see that when I take the top one you will see we get everything that happened for the part if I go down and I take one of the ones for the components then it's component separate and this is why people uh, favor uh, favor this now one of the things we do need is we do need the holes, the three holes that were in the handle um, into um, the, the blade itself, because we're gonna put some screws together to hold all this together. Well, um, just so you know, as a little added bonus in here, you can absolutely go in and activate a handle, or activate the blade, sorry, because we're gonna, we're gonna make a change to the blade, right? We can open up a sketch, for example, on the top of that blade. We can still see the handle. And if we're using P for project, we can go in here and we can borrow or steal uh, the edges from the handle and now use those. If we go in and do a, a Q um, for, we can actually hide the handle for a second. We can go in here, we can then select uh, this and we can make a uh, a cut through through the blade here using the handle the holes in the handle as a uh, as a reference so I hope that this somewhat makes sense to you um, how we can go in here and work with rule with rule number one so this took me 13 minutes to talk about this and I hope I haven't lost anybody yet uh, because now things are going to get a little bit exciting. Um, and again, if you came in late, we're talking about rule number one on the for that came out of the forum. Um, and if you did the electrical uh, box um, tutorial, then you've already done it the way, did it the same way as I just did this one, multi-component part, multi, you know, an assembly. We are, we are going in here and we are, are creating... Um, the components first and then we flip between each one to kind of add uh, the different uh, features in there but like I said sometimes um, you know nobody's the I'm sometimes I like to break the rules um, so <laughs> so so let's talk about another way you could go about doing this and and I'm not trying to tell you that um, you know what is the best because it really depends on what you what you're doing let me open up a brand new um a brand new part here so completely empty but instead of going up here and right click and say create new um new components you could go ahead and open up a sketch in here on this face and we could go into the sketch blade and did what we did before again remember if you edit a sketch you can literally just window control c go back into this new part control v and we will uh, we will get this here and again it, this is movable um you can either choose to do what i'm doing here use a coincident relationship to fully define it so now that is fully defined now i'm not going to exit out of this sketch yet um, because I could also now go into the saw handle, do the same thing. Window, control C, go back into our file over here, control V, and that's going to be placed in here. I'm just going to say OK to this, and then I could just right click here and uh, do a fix. Kind of like doing the same thing. But I just created all my sketches inside of one single part. Now, if you ever watch any of my layout sketches, uh, where I'm talking about layout designs, then you could start creating components now and have the sketches laying 
within all the sketches in one main folder, but you could also, if you're just modeling things and need to get things done, um, you could also at this point go in and say, all right, let me just hit Q. Let me select this selection here. I'm actually gonna select this selection right here. Whoop, now you're next to see that my holes are already in this design because I have the sketches all on one. Hit symmetrical and let's make that one millimeter. Hit okay. Right now the sketch goes away because as soon as you hit enter, the sketch is eaten up. That's another preference. Show you for another day. I can just click on here and highlight it again. Now I could go ahead and do another Q, press pull, right? Could select this selection here. And then I could also just select this selection here, symmetrical, and that was 25. Now I get to make, it's gonna do a cut because it, uh, it sees that we are, we are interfering with other material. But now you get to make a very uh, big decision. You could choose at this point to just say join. What will that do? That will make one body out of this whole thing. Hit OK. And we have one body. Right? Like this is one component. Let me just hide that sketch again. Uh, that is one component. Um, depending on what you need to do with this part, um, this part here is really no different than, uh, than this part. Right? Except we have multiple components. But I mean like dimensionally wise, this one um, is, is, is like outline is the same, okay? Now we could also decide in that extrusion dialog, instead of doing join, we could say new body. What will mean that now we just broke this up and we now have two bodies. One body is for the saw blade, one body is uh, for the handle. Again, Exact same like physical result on the, I don't know if you can say physical, <laughs> you can't say physical result on the screen. Same uh, volume, <laughs> um, volume on the screen on this one as on this one kind of, right? Uh, but two different, two different um, approaches. And you know, sometimes when I'm modeling, um, I get down this road and then I'm like, Oh, I actually didn't want a multi-body. I want a component. See, because it's in some of the, if you've watched some of the previous live streams, you know there are certain things we can do uh, with bodies that is a lot harder to do with components, like this whole using combine feature or using something like the boundary fill. So there is some advantages of using these multi-body type what we had here, multi-bodies versus um, saw blade. So my point right now is that volume-wise on the screen, this one and this one are identical. The difference right now is that we have bodies versus having components. Now check this out. We do have the option to turn bodies into components. So at this point, I could right click on this body right here, what is the blade, and say create component from bodies. Click on that and I get a component. I can slow left click on that. We can call that saw blade, just like we did on the first one. I can go up and right click on the other uh, body. That was the handle, right? That's the handle, right? Right click, create component from bodies. Right click on this one and say saw handle, okay? So now we're getting a little bit closer to what we, what we had here, okay? So you can do this. You can work in a multi-body environment and then decide to make it into uh, components later on. It comes with a price. Remember this with a great, uh, what is it? Great functions, great responsibilities, great, great power, great responsibilities. Um, it comes with a cost or a difference, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. So what I pointed out before in our first model, we have saw blade, we have handle. If we have ticked up on top here, 
we have everything that have happened. If we go over and look on the second one we just created, if we have this one ticked, we still have everything that, is, that have happened. But look at the difference. So here we have the first sketch, two extrusions, that's the blade, that's the handle, and then these two means that we turned it into components. If we go to our first model, the first thing we created was the components, then we created two sketches, two extrusions, then another sketch and a cut to make those holes. So our, our first one definitely took more features than uh, our second one. The reason that rule number one is, 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 a, is a favorable option is that if I now go back to our rule number one here and I click on the saw blade, you will see everything that affected the saw blade is in here. And if I go to the saw handle, everything that affected the saw handle is in here. If I go to our new one and I go into the saw blade, the only thing that is in the saw blade right now is that we turned it into a component. If I go into the saw handle, the only thing that is in here right now is that it became a, a handle. Now, if I decided that I was going to do more to this part, for example, adding teeth, and I decided to do that right now, then that will populate down here under saw blade. It's important to know that with Fusion, this history down here will always be true. It, it, it cannot be manipulated. And that is to make sure that things are stable. If you're coming from older CAD software, like I have worked with SOLIDWORKS, I've worked with, with Inventor, then you can modify down here, but it also many times results in things breaking. And that's what in Fusion, that is the overall goal, make a better trusted design. So if you go down this route, then, and you start suddenly realizing bodies are gonna be components, then it is gonna be affected on your history line. Why would you care? Why would you care that this is uh, that this history line now is a little bit different because our blade is not containing everything, but it's up here. Well, I personally think, and again, you are wel welcome to talk down in the comment area. I will read them all. I'll probably comment on them all. But the reason that people are against that is two reasons. One is because, well, we like when we model something up, and especially if we gotta hand it off to somebody else, you kinda like the idea of cleaning things up a little bit so it doesn't look like a big mess. So in the first one, where we use rule number one, well, then we can kind of resemble everything the way it was created in there, and if you hand it off to somebody else, it might be easier to, for them to kinda like see it. Um, of course, also, if you're like me, you can't remember what you had for dinner last night, <laughs> and you come back to the sign three months later, then rule number one can be a little bit easier to work with because that is done that way. Another benefit that comes out of this is in rule number one, if I decided that I was gonna use this handle in another design, I can right click on it and then I can say save a copy as, right? And we can give this whatever name we want here. I'm just gonna save it out here and now when i open up that saved out saw handle now i've broken the link between the original one but now you will see that that contains that order we created everything in versus if we go over and do this one in our second option well there's not really anything in there right because it, the history line will always will always be true and i favor that i'll tell you like i i, I think that's a good thing so if I open up the second one, you will now see that that has just a kind of a dummy body in there, right? There's not even anything really in here where in the other one we have that. So that's to understand the difference between rule number one and converting, like we did in this case, converting things over. So 
I know that if you're sitting out there and you're fairly new to Fusion uh, or to CAD or trying to learn things, you're always looking for that, what is the, just tell me the right dang way to do it and I'll do it that way. I don't need all these, all these different options. But it's important to understand that working with multi-bodies gives you some flexibility um, as you are I'm, I'm, I'm modeling along. And um, I, I just be honest with you, as I have gotten older, I care less and less about what other people think of me. Um, but, it's, but it's pretty good if you read some of the comments I get sometimes. <laughs> um, so um, I don't really care too much about how I get to the end result. I'm not too worried about somebody else opening up my file and trying to, you know, they're thinking, oh my goodness, what the heck, what the heck is he doing? I'm gonna round this one out here with uh, bringing back this first model um, because in this first model here, and this one is down in the description area. And the reason that I did this model, so you can download this model, you can open up this model. The reason that I did this is because I knew somebody was, was gonna tell me, you did not model up the teeth. It's like, okay, fine, I'll model up the teeth. Now you will see with this model on purpose that I actually uh, did do it the second way. So if you follow, you can always click on the little play button down here. You will see how I followed it step by step, just like we did before. I actually modeled up all the teeth and then I turned things into components and I added the McMaster car uh, screws right here. Now, when it came to the teeth, I just wanna show you this. and. I, I'm sorry, I don't have a lot of time to prepare for these live streams because I got other things to do. Um, but one of the things, and, and I should probably pay better attention because I actually have a, a cousin who back in Denmark, I'm pretty sure are working at a saw mill where they make saw blades. So he probably right now is shaking his head. Um, but a saw blade is actually kind of curved. If you're looking at it from the front uh, of them, they are not, like just, they're just not straight. They actually have a uh, a curve to them. So you can kind of see how they're off, well, offset from one another. That's the word I'm trying to look for. Um, I use the loft command to do that. Um, I probably had to look a little bit further, do a little bit more research to make sure. I don't know if I got all the angles right. A lot of this stuff is done just by me looking at it quickly here five minutes before the live stream. But that was also why I want to share you this file so you can grab this little ticker here and you can move all the way back to where I didn't have any blades on it and then you will see I created one blade there that I lofted. So if we zoom in on that, you will see that is offset kind of like as a swirl to one side. And the way they do the, I looked up uh, how it's made but it's actually a very cool YouTube series, how it's made. The way they actually do this is, um, at least in that video I saw, is that they, they, they punch all the teeth and then they bend them uh, one way and the other way. So kind of like what you see here. That's why I use the loft to kind of get the, the curve uh, out of that. That here is what I had planned on showing. I guess my point here, I can tell you, it's getting hot in my office. I'm about ready to get my air condition back on. <laughs> um, but I guess my point here, and if you watch this live stream, I would love if you will give me some feedback. For some reason I can't get my mouse back over on the right screen. Um, I would love your feedback down in the comments area. Anything you have to add, make it better. You know, let's help each other out here. Um, my thing is rule number one, hopefully now you get it. You understand why. You also understand some of the advantages. If I forgot some, add it down in the comment area, please. Appreciate it. Uh, then I'll give you a thumbs up. <laughs> um, now, um, but also understand, I, this is just me talking. Hey, I don't know how much you should listen to me, but in my opinion, it's also okay to break rule number one sometimes just to get something on the screen because at my point before, this blade here, rule number one, and this blade, the hacked up version with uh, components in it, well, they are the same on the screen, right? 
So have that into consideration. If you're gonna share it with somebody, somebody else gotta work on it, maybe rule number one is good. But if there's something you need to internally for you to do something with, then rule number one maybe is not that important. Friends, that's all I plan on showing today. There will not be any live stream um, tomorrow. There will be on Thursday and Friday though. So I'm looking forward to see you then. Facebook, YouTube, I really appreciate it. Thumbs up if you like this. Thumbs down if you don't. I, I want your feedback. Comments, I read them all. I reply on 99.9% .9 of them. Uh, mean the world to me. Thank you so much. See you hopefully tomorrow. Take care, folks. Yeah.